Welcome to another real conversation between two native English speakers. I am Adam Navis, and I'm joined, as always, by Liz Wade. Hi, Liz. Hi, Adam. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Good. Uh, that's the typical English answer, right? I'm, I'm fine. fine. I'm fine. Well, today we're going to be talking about our featured program, which is Food Taboos. Um, I am very excited to talk about this program because it is a program that makes me feel things. It makes me have reactions about, ooh, would I, would I eat that or not? But, uh, so stick around for that. But before we get to the program, I just want to tell you about something that I'm excited about. I know Liz is excited about as well, is we have Spotlight memberships, which is on YouTube. There's a little button that says join. And when you click that button, you can learn about different membership levels where you can uh, get special emojis and badges on our YouTube channel for our live shows. You can get comments. Uh, that badge will show up and you can get um, at different levels. You can request some PDFs of scripts, which I think is a great thing we're offering and also extra content, extra videos, extra programs. It's just our way of helping you take your English learning to the next level. If that's not for you, just make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and the bell so you don't miss anything that we, uh, any of our content, right? Did I miss anything, Liz? You didn't. Uh, and I do want to point out, uh, well, I guess a little bit of a missed thing, but we have, uh, we have a special extra video for this program oh, on, on yes. for, for members who are advanced level and above. So this actually, this uh, taboo food script program has an, an an extra mini script for yeah. members yes featuring yours truly which is a fancy word saying me <laughs> uh so we're going to talk about this food taboos program and i think this is a fascinating program if you haven't um if you haven't listened to it already please go do that because it really is going to help you understand what we're talking about. Um, so food taboos are foods that have some kind of um, not supposed, like untouchable, like it, it's you're not supposed to eat them for some reason, either a religious reason or a social reason. Um, right. I actually think it's really difficult to, even as a native English speaker, knowing what the word taboo means, I think it's actually really difficult to wrap my mind around around what a taboo is. And so I think it, it helps, too, to say that it, like taboos don't have to be just for foods. They oh, can correct. be uh, actions or um, things, right? Like yeah. um, something that is that is taboo or not allowed or like in poor taste in your culture might not be taboo in a different culture. And so then it goes along with food. Right. And taboos even in a culture change. Right. Uh, right. They change time. over time. Yeah. So it, it starts with um, the program starts talking about fugu or it's a puffer fish, a fish that its defensive mechanism is it, it blows up like a ball with little spikes on it. Yeah. It looks really funny. It looks, it, it is really funny. It's often in like, if you see a movie with fish in it, it will be often that kind of fish because it's a funny little character. It's in uh, Finding Nemo. Exactly. Um, so, but if you eat the fish, like if you or I, Liz, were to just say, oh, we caught a fish and we're going to prepare it, it would yeah. probably kill us because it's po it has poison in it. Yeah. So you have to go through a long process of learning how to prepare the fish just right in order to make it not poisonous to people. And so here's my question for you, Liz, as yeah. would you try this fish knowing that if it were prepared wrong, it would kill you? Um, okay. Like, so, and we're assuming that somebody else paid for it. So I'm not paying like a million dollars to eat You're to at a this fish. reputable I restaurant think... where, where you would assume the chef. I, I think that if I were at a very uh, like reputable, high-end, uh, expensive restaurant, and I knew 
that uh, that the chef was like one of these experienced sushi chefs, I might eat it. I might eat it. Wrong answer. I have a pretty adventurous palate. Like, I will usually eat whatever, like, uh, cultural food is in front of me. I don't know. I, I'm guessing you would not eat it. Well, Adam. okay, so there's there's adventurous. Like, ooh, I'm going to try this octopus. Something that, that is yeah. more, that has a, a, a texture I might not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just don't think it's worth it. There's other, there's other fish in the sea, as they say. Like, literally. It's true. I mean, the thing is, like, I'm not going to try, like, base jumping or free climbing, right? Um, but this is an acceptable or accessible, uh, like, danger that I could, that I could take on. Yeah, okay. So that that's fair. I I could understand that appeal because I wouldn't I there's some riskier like actions that I think I would do that maybe you wouldn't. So we'll we'll go with that. Yeah. But yeah. but the taboo around fugu is that it could kill you if if it's prepared improperly. There are other right. things that Well, and in one second, I what I loved um cuz I, you know, I did some reading on this program. Yeah. Um, is that there are still, uh, like, this is still an issue. It's not like something that, you know, oh, 100 years ago, if you prepared this fish wrong, it could kill you, or oh, yeah. the things like that. Like, um, there were supermarkets just in the last few years that recalled fugu fish because they accidentally sold it and it could kill people. So but anyway, see, that I, I thought that, that doesn't was make interesting. Sense to me. That doesn't that make was, sense to me. Yeah, and I, I thought that was an interesting little anecdote. I get if a food tastes bad or if you're, a food tastes like uniquely uh, acquired taste, right? Like maybe a, a food, um, like there's, it, the program talks about the the shark meat that if you, it has a bad smell, but a good I taste. I definitely want to talk about this, yes. It has a bad smell, but a good taste. Yeah. Like, I okay, I could get it. But the risk of death just doesn't seem worth it to me. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I could see that. So let's talk about whether or not you would eat this shark, right? So just uh, for people who maybe have not listened to the program yet, um, this shark is a fermented or, or rotting shark meat that traditionally is made by uh, burying it underground until all the juices come out of it. And yeah. then it kind of like, then they hang it up for a couple months. Dries um, out, yep. And then it dries out. And then um, the description is um, uh, that it smells like liquid human waste. So, uh, you know, I feel like we all know what that smells like. Uh, and uh, it tastes like uh, cheese, just right? a mild cheese. Yeah. So... Um, this one, I, I would initially say, I would first say... You know, that sounds interesting. I might try that. Although I will say, when I was in Vietnam, uh, oh man, it was a year and a half ago now, I, I did not try durian. And that oh. is one of those things. Have you tried durian? I have had durian. Yeah. See, I have not had durian. And I know that it smells terrible, but apparently it tastes good and sweet. Nope. It also <laughs> okay. tastes horrible. <laughs> okay. I have so had anyway, it this shark I... is supposed like it is supposed to um, taste taste good, but when I was reading about this program and because all of these things you think oh I need to know more about this food why do people eat it yeah um uh, two chefs that I have watched on TV are okay so one is Anthony Bourdain and I'm okay. sure you know Anthony Bourdain yep. okay uh, he's a very famous chef. Um, and, uh, he had a travel show where he traveled all around the world and he would, he would eat any, anything put yeah. before him. Oh, anything. He said it was literally the worst food that he had ever tasted in the oh. whole world. That from so, someone who's eaten a lot of different yes! things that, that is a hard, hard to ignore. Yes. So, um, that to me is like, well, should I try it? Oh, I don't know. Um, but the other one is Gordon Ramsay. Okay, another famous is, chef. Yep. Yeah, he is also a TV chef. Um, he has a bunch of uh, cooking shows. He's a very uh, a decorated chef. Yeah, yeah. 
um, and a very big personality. Um, I saw a YouTube video where he and another man were trying this Hakarl. Hakarl? Hakarl. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he took a bite and he literally he chewed it up and he spit it into a bucket because he couldn't even swallow it. Now, the other guy was like, I'd have another piece. But yeah. Gordon Ramsay spit it into a bucket and he that, wouldn't try. That's not... Um... So... If I and I have heard, I have read that if you want to try this food, you cannot smell it before you put it in your yeah. mouth. I don't. I don't. So would you try this? Okay. So before you told me all this, I was like, oh yeah, I, I would be willing <laughs> to try this. Now that you have, you have, I'm more informed. I probably wouldn't. I am not a super adventurous eater. I want yeah, that, to be. That's true. Like I want to be, mm -hmm. but I am a slow, like it, like I'm, I'm even, even in the foods that I'm familiar with, I would rather have like one kind of cookie or biscuit, however you want to say. <laughs> yeah. And your favorite ice cream is vanilla. Yes. Uh, Which, so I will say I gave you a hard time in that ice cream program. Yeah. Uh, and somebody in the comments was like, Hey, lay off Adam. Yeah. See, I like his ice cream flavors, not I yours. Got, Everybody loves Liz, but I got my crew. <laughs> you guys know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you've made it through durian. Yeah. When I when I tried durian, I my expectations were quite low. Like people said it smelled and tasted like wet gym socks. Socks yep, that you'd yep. you'd work out in and be all sweaty and then stinky. And yep. that was pretty that was pretty accurate. So I think yeah. I think I can't expect it to taste good. Like my, I see. Yeah. for new foods, if you're not familiar, if they're, if they're from a different culture, it can be very spicy or it can be very, um, have a, have a texture that you're just not familiar with. And right. I think, but it's good to be exposed to those things because it helps you understand other cultures and it helps those mm -hmm. things that seem, um, odd to you to become more taboo. familiar. Yeah. Taboo. Um, so there are there are, we, there's a lot in this program we haven't gotten to yet. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to make sure and um, invite people who are listening or watching. Please tell us if you have ever eaten these foods. So fugu or um, how Carl. Um, I would love to know if you have eaten these foods or uh, it, if you would. Well, like, I can't leave this this conversation without talking about the fact that there are many people who eat different parts of an animal uh, yeah. for uh, because they believe it will have medical benefits or sexual health benefits. Uh, so the, the program talks about eating the uh, sex organ of a bull or a male cow. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I would not, I would not eat that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think I would either. I don't think it's probably marketed to me, though. No, I don't think I would, I don't think it would be worth it. I have eaten cow brain before mm. when I was in Argentina, and that wasn't too bad. It was just... See, I feel like that's a pretty adventurous food. I've never eaten that. Yeah. Well, I just think the idea that it would have those benefits are yeah. uh even when they've been proven not to i don't know well you know uh as this program says like food was the first medicine it's so true. you know if you if you eat something and then uh you know you have a you have a benefit it doesn't necessarily it isn't necessarily because of that food but it could feel that way and then you know you say hey when i was sick i ate blah 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 and yeah. you should try it I just think it's it's crazy. Um, you know, there's um, bird nest soup where people have to climb up into caves and, and it's really expensive. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, people who try to chop rhinoceros horns off to make medicine. Uh, it just feels odd to me that we live in a world where people don't have enough. And then we're going to such extremes just to have food experiences. Right. But right. Um, maybe yeah, I'm maybe always, I'm not. Those people. 
who want more. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of wanting more, uh, if you want to hear about more taboo foods from different cultures, um, again, we have a really great... Uh, extra video for members only about different taboo foods. And this is a feature that we're hoping to do for, um, yeah, many programs coming up. Yeah. And so I hope that you click that join button and, and check out what becoming a member could help you with. Hey, Liz, let me ask you a question. If people join, is it easy for them to unjoin? Let's say they their situation changes and they, they, they don't want to... Yeah. And they, everybody will want to support us. Yeah. But if they want to, if they want to try it out for a while, can they stop? Yes. So you can. First of all, when you hit the join button, you get to see all of the things that are offered. You don't have to pay, at, at I mean, at all right away, unless you decide to join. So if you decide to join, then you can click whatever level you want, and then your credit card or however you have. Um, uh, whatever you have hooked up through YouTube, yeah. uh, we'll start that. And then you can see the membership page, all of the resources that are there. And you get access to all of the membership resources that were before um, or that came before. And then if you decide that the membership is just not for you, that's okay. We still love you and we still hope that you are recommending Spotlight. Um, but if you decide that membership is not for you or you can't pay for it anymore or or whatever your reason is, um, you can just really easily cancel on YouTube. Um, and as long as it's before your next billing cycle, it just stops. Easy peasy. Yeah, or as I like to say, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Exactly. Well, yeah. if, if, you, uh, if you're new here, make sure you check out our Facebook page and our website. If you're, uh, we have a lot of social media. We have a lot of content that if this is, if you're new, please check it out. Um, do all the things like subscribe, follow, and um, that way you'll never miss any of this great, wonderful content. And mm -hmm. until next time, we hope that you continue to listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out. Mm -hmm.